Good evening. Let's stand tonight as we begin to sing in What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Singing now, number 595, Send the Light. Matthew chapter 4. 
I'm going to go over some announcements just right quick, just to touch on some things. We uh, recognize our graduates this morning. We'll do that again here in just a little bit. We'll go have a, a fellowship, uh, welcome all of our visitors who may have came. and um, uh, We're very proud of our, our graduates, and um, we're thankful for them. Uh, T-shirts for VBS, if you're getting a T-shirt, we had a VBS meeting. Uh, we're probably, you know, we, we may end up around 200 kids. So if you, if you can volunteer, if you can help, if you can you know, do whatever, uh, let us know. See, Kimbo, we have our uh, background checks. If you had not had one, uh, let us know. We'll get those to you. Uh, we're going to need a bunch of folks uh, to help. And um, so remember that. If you want a T-shirt, if you're helping, you want a T-shirt, sign up on the back. Uh, team camp, we're going to leave. It'll be the June 2nd through the 5th. We don't have any more spots. If you want to get on the list, let me know if you know somebody does. But... We don't, we, those spots have been filled, and um, that'll be second through the fifth. If you're a, a couple and you'd like to take mine and Kimbo's spot, just see me after the service, and we'll get you, fix you right on up. Uh, we'll leave that Sunday. Like I said, right after service, we'll leave. If you have, ch- if you have teenage, we'll leave Sunday right after church, uh, and then we'll, we'll go to Millport, Alabama, and uh, we'll be there for three days. And uh, So pray for that. The WMU shoe boxes, uh, we're taking up stuff. It's in the it's in the bulletin. The stuff we'll be collecting, it, you can put it in the in the baskets in the back. Um, and I think that's all of our announcements. Uh, do be in prayer for VBS. It's, it's coming up in our teen camp also, as we go and we we'll have some time to really uh, put the phones away and put everything away and just really get into the Word of God with our teenagers and really um, help them to grow. I was talking with McKinley. I still have the notes that she took. Uh, at last year's uh, great notes she took great notes and I'm glad we got her a little book today um, take more notes she took notes this morning it's great uh, and uh, so remember those those it's those times sometimes that they grow the most that they hear the gospel and it really works on them so do pray for that uh, Matthew chapter 4 we're going to finish Matthew hopefully tonight and in Matthew chapter 4 uh, we talked about this morning temptation any comments anything any questions? Anybody have anything? You think anything was wrong or right or any of that? Anybody? Any good examples? Everybody remember, everybody go home and Google Bewitched or uh, whatever it was. The I Dream of Genie, whatever. All right? You're not sent to me. I appreciate that. She didn't hear anything else I preached this morning, but she knew when she talked about I Dream of Genie. So, yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah, that's right. It was Bewitched. That's right, it was. Yeah, well, if Tony said it, you know it's got to be right. Yeah. Anything on the actual sermon that I preached this morning? That's worse, huh? Listen, as, as Jesus came, as Jesus was preaching, and as he, or as he was beginning his ministry, he goes from relative obscurity. He sees John the Baptist. John the Baptist identifies him as the Son of God, as the one who takes away the sin of the world. The dove, uh, the, Holy, the, the Spirit... Um, it's upon him, his father speaks to him, and as he begins his ministry, he's full of the Holy Spirit. It says in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, he's full of the Holy Spirit when he goes to be tempted. Every single person in this room, every single person here this morning, it doesn't matter if you're whatever you are, you're going to be tempted. And even as uh, Heather, she's going to be tempted. Everybody's tempted. Tempted to get here early. Tempted to get here on time. <laughs> tempted to get here late. You're going to be tempted. These are very practical things. As Jesus starts his ministry, you, the importance that Jesus shows, he is the example all the way through. So what he does, we need to really take heed to what he does to see how he does it. And, and, and when, he, when he, listen, you talk about these graduates, you think we face things. Imagine having a phone on everything you did when you was 20 years old, 25. I know some of you. It'd been bad, man. I mean, it'd have put us under the jail. Or, you know, it wouldn't even, but... And, and they face so many things because now it's, it's things that are, they, they call wrong right. You know, that's what it says in the Word. They're, they're, they change everything. There's no truth. It's all relative to how, they, to how a person thinks instead of the truth of the Word of God. And so when you know truth, when you get filled with the Spirit, if, you endure, if you're coming up against a temptation, if you, you got your phone out and you're fixing to look at something you shouldn't look, if you don't know, if you're not full of the Spirit, you don't know what truth is. You don't have the written word of God. Your word, I've hid in my heart that I might not against you. 
Yeah, that's your defense. If you don't have that, that's why so many people, you see so many uh, unbelievers and, and some believers too, they keep on making the same mistakes because they're in darkness. They don't see it. These people who believe all these crazy things that a man could be a woman and all those just things we never even thought would happen, they think they're right. I mean, that's the crazy part of it. But they're in darkness and God has given them over to what they believe. He says, okay, you want to believe that? Hey, I'll just let you... Okay, it's your choice. They're in darkness. They don't know any better. And so Jesus says he repeatedly used the word of God, and, and then the, the angels came. The devil left him. The angels came, it says in verse 11, and then he begins, his, he begins his earthly ministry. Okay, so now he's fixing to go, welcome back, Austin. All right, man. The McCanns are back with us. Great to have y'all back. I just, that's how it goes. I go from really focused to just, there they are. They've been gone for six weeks. Seven weeks? Six? Yeah. Welcome back, man. So glad to have y'all. But as he starts his earthly ministry, he immediately, there's three things he immediately does. You're going to see his motive, you're going to see his, his, his mission, and his ministry, or his message, okay? So look at, verse, look at verse 12 here. We'll start reading in verse 12. We'll go all the way through the rest of, the rest of this chapter uh, in chapter 4. It says, when Jesus heard that John was in prison, so John the Baptist, he told the king, the king... Uh, the king t- um, took his brother's wife and made her his. John the Baptist says, hey man, you're wrong for that. You shouldn't do that. The king says, okay, I'm going to put you in jail because you came against me. It's essentially how it went down. So now John's in prison, and, and I'm going I'm to preach a message in, in probably a couple of weeks or three about, about when John was in prison. Listen, John, man, if there's ever, John is, the, is, is a prophet. Man, he is he is. A, you know God's man and all those things when John gets put into prison some things changes for John and I'm going to show you what that is you can read ahead and find out for yourself but I'm going to show you what that is in a few weeks listen the strongest Christian when, when you're when, when the when the when the tribulation the troubles the trials you better be ready because when, when you begin to start thinking about some things that you know to be true and you start doubting those things, and we're going to see John the Baptist and how Jesus reassured him of who he was. But he's in prison now, and it says Jesus heard that John had been in prison. He departed to Galilee. Galilee. He left Nazareth. He came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali. And <clears throat> it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned, or the light has came forth. It's, that's, that's talking about Jesus and how now the light has shone. It was something that, that, that rose up, um, and he's speaking of Jesus there. Now listen, Isaiah is a thousands, they're hundreds of years earlier, okay? He's hundreds of years earlier. He, he would never see this. You know, how can a guy that's, that's that far back uh, you know, prophesy something that far forward, what are the chances? It's God. And he says, and he said, um, and so from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their debts. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and kinds of diseases among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria. They brought, him, uh, they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases, or many diseases, um, and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee, and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. So the first thing we see here in verse 12 is, we see verse 12, it says, When Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Okay? He departed, or God directed, the Father directed his steps. Now listen to me. He left one place. You know why he left Nazareth? It says in Luke, uh, in Luke, it talks about this. He, he, he left Nazareth, Nazareth, and he was directed because 
they rejected him, okay? He, he left one place, and he went to another place, and he was directed by God. Listen, these graduates, in, in their life, in your life, I talked to people this week, they really don't know what to do. I said, if you don't know what to do, don't do anything. And thine ears, listen to this right here. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. You have to have godly counsel around you sometimes to know what the next step is. You, there, there's, no, there's no just guessing at it. God says, my counsel will direct you at what you need to do next. Listen. And thine ears shall hear a word. Everybody say word. Word. Yeah. We said it this morning, right? It's the word. He says, you're going to hear, your ears shall hear a, hear a word behind thee, Isaiah 30, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. When you turn so to the right and when you turn to the left. Listen, when I came here, there was no doubt this is where I was supposed to be. I was just unsure at times. I mean, listen, I, I, would be, I would be lying to you if I didn't say, you know, I thought I missed the sign. I thought, man, I missed this. How did I? But it's where, I, but I, I was, listen, I had a word from God. In my spirit, I knew this is where he wanted me to be. And so, and, and that's why I came. If I hadn't known, I mean, there's other churches that came to us and, or came to me and said, hey, would, would you like to come and fill out an application or whatever you do? I, I just thought you heard from God and went where he wanted you to go. But apparently there was another, a whole other side to it I didn't know. But that's just what, I, listen, we, I, I prayed about being here and, and, and what God, I knew what God could do. And, um, he, he, you know, what's, what the vision that God has given me just burns inside of me. But I knew he had a purpose for my life. Jesus got his purpose from the Father. He, he said, look, I'm only going to do the Father's will. It's not what I want. It's not what I like. It's what God wants. And he's direct, we're directed by God. He said, I'll go forth uh, to this task. Uh, he wanted to carry out God's purpose for his life. Uh, and Christ knew that God would direct him as his servant. So we see here, we see his, his, uh, his motive. Or is it, listen, a lot of times when, we, when we're sent somewhere, when, when Jesus was sent and John the Baptist, a lot of John the Baptist's followers now followed Christ. Okay? Listen, there's no competition in the kingdom. We're not rivals. We don't, listen, I hope Union Chapel has 500 people. I hope they have all they can stand. They're not my rival. We're joint servants. That's what we are. First Baptist, South Hamilton, Free Will. I don't care where you are. I want you to have as many as you can. We're joint servants. And, and, and that's our, listen, that's part of being directed is understanding you're God's person. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price, the price of the blood of Jesus. And so he gets rejected in, in Nazareth, and he, and he goes now to Capernaum. So now we see his motive in verse 14. In verse 14, he says that it might be fulfilled. Listen, everything, even to Jesus, it was all about the Word. It was all about Scripture. Isaiah had prophesied something, and Jesus knew that that was him. You know, he, he started this three-year journey, and he knows that the beginning of the end is near. Even when he started this. You, imagine how focused you would be if you knew you had three years. How much more focused we would be on the kingdom work and what, and what God wanted. And it was the scripture. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. John 15. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You'll know what's true. Don't turn on CNN. Don't turn on Fox. Don't turn on Dan Bongino, all those guys. Don't turn those folks on. You turn on, thus saith the word of God. As it is written, that's what we direct our steps, right? The righteous, listen, you can pick and choose what you want to. The righteous steps are ordered by the Lord. He orders your steps. He knows where you're going. He knows where he's taking you. Listen to uh, Ephesians, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 
it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. First Peter, seeing ye have purified your souls, obeying the truth through the Spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. It's, it's, it's the love, it's ready to be, listen, and I'm going to cover this in a minute, but listen to me. You, you have to be connected to who Christ is. Before you're ever a fisher of men, before you're teaching or preaching, you have to be connected to the Word of God. What does the Word say? Because that's what I'm going to obey. You can't do it your way. Listen, that's the first thing that the devil tempted Jesus with. Was, hey, Jesus, why don't you just do it your way? It'll be easier. Just turn the bread. Just turn the rocks to bread. Skip a step. It hurts too much. It's too hard. Sure it is. It's the Christian life. Man, if a preacher comes in there and he just tells you how much better it's going to be just because you've got sick now, and it is better, you have Christ, you have a way out, it's not repair. Listen, it is hard. I mean, it's hard. Right, Abby? It's hard. Hey, walk down those halls. I'm telling you, it's hard. But when you rely on the Word, man, the Word gets you, allows you to see where you're going. It directs you just like it did Christ. And we see now in verses 15 and 16, we see His mission. The mission of every believer is people. If you don't like people, you're not going to be a very good Christian. You're not going to be a very good Christian. If, if It's people. It's to take people and to do what Christ did. He always had time for people. Man, I get so tired of my phone ringing sometimes, I like to just throw it in a bathtub. I do. I get so tired of, I mean, listen, when I see some people's name pop up on that right there, I just say stuff to my phone that I, w- I hope they don't hear. Right? I know I ain't the only one. It, you know, but, but that's, what, that's what Christians do. I didn't say I hated helping them or those things. You just know what's coming. Some people, I don't go up and ask them, hey, how you doing? Uh-uh. I don't even ask them because I know how they're doing. I can see it in their face. But the mission, because now, because Christ is the light, before we can see the light, we have to know we're in darkness. So he left Nazareth, who was a very religious place of, 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 of many Jewish people, to go to set up his headquarters in Capernaum or into Galilee. Guess what? Galilee, the full name of Galilee, is Galilee of Gentiles. They were a bunch of people who, who, were, who, who lived in darkness. They, they would just accept anything and everything. And, and so now he says, he says uh, that's why Isaiah said, uh, go to pull up uh, the chapter 9. We see here Isaiah, what he says in, in verses 15 and 16. In Isaiah 9, it says, Nevertheless, the dimness shall, uh, shall not be as such was there. Let's see, vexation. For he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon, the land of Naphtali. Afterward, did more grievously affect her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, the Galilee of the nations. Verse 2. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land, the shadow of death, upon them the light has shined. So now the light has came where darkness is. So now these people can see. Listen, if you see an unbeliever, they are walking in darkness. You know why they act like a fool and they do things that unpeople, unsaved people do? You know why? Because they're unsaved. They're not saved. They don't know. They shouldn't know any better. The Bible says until, unless they accept Jesus Christ, they'll never know better. And they'll die separated from Christ. They'll go straight to hell. Listen, we talked about this morning, believing they were right when they're wrong. And so we the light shineth in darkness, John 1, 5. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Wherefore, saith Ephesians 5, 4, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, Christ shall give thee light. You, listen, you as the believer, and most everybody in here uh, uh, should be saved, or you'll have a chance. Anyway, listen, you are the light. Can people look at you and say, Man, you know what? I want what Annabelle's got. Man, when she walks down them halls, I see the light of Jesus on her. Is that what they say? When they see Miss Brenda walking down the street, man, when she's over at that office or about a house, and they say, man, uh, man, she's the light. 
When they see you out, when they see you out at Walmart and you're walking, can they see the light? Listen, when they drive by here to get their food and we feed them, do they see us as the light? They should. Isaiah said, man, there's a guy coming. He is the light. When you get yourself attached to him, you're going to be the light. You're going to have time for people. You're going to minister to people. You're going to see the needs of people. We have people every single Sunday that come in our church. You can see it in their eyes that are hurting. Man, there's so much messed up stuff going on. But you know what? That's what we do. All they need is Jesus. I talked to a guy yesterday, and, and he's as messed up as can be. You know the only thing he needs? Jesus Hey, you know the only thing I needed when I was just like him, when I was just as messed up as he was? You know the only thing I needed, Jackson? Jesus. I'm thankful that he, listen, y'all, he allowed us to see. Is that not great? Is that not enough to come in here to get excited about? He rescued us. He saved us. He gave us light in darkness. I don't have to walk around wondering where I'm going to be if somebody slides into me or if, or if my life is over this afternoon. I know that i got a, I got a man who came and died for me. He is the light of the world, and he'll take care of me. It's the mission in verse 15. We go on to see in verse 16 the people sat in darkness. In the shadow. Listen, some people are just content with sitting in darkness. And you know what? On Wednesday nights, that's exactly who we go after. That's exactly who we go after. God didn't even want us to pray with him last week, much less come to church or anything else about church. And we're going back. We'll go back. He, he, listen, he may not let us pray with him, but he's going to get tired of us. He made the wrong mistake. He should let us pray, and we'd have been on our way. But now we're going back. We're going to aggravate him so much till he, he says, Lord, just come on. And then we see the message he said in verse in chapter in verse 17. From that time on, Jesus began to preach. He began to be the pr- word preached there means to herald the message. What message was that? It was the message of repentance. That was his message. There's two terms in repentance. Repentance means to number one, turn from where you're going and turn the other way toward righteousness. I remember when I was in basic training, I wasn't very good at marching and those things. I mean, I, mean, I thought I was, but they didn't think I was. And so you understand that, Faye, right? And so when you did an about face, you would just place your foot and you would just turn. If you've been in the military, you would know how that, how that works. And there's a little trick, right, Roger? Yeah, Roger was actually over me in the guard. He was one of my officers. And, um, and uh, I'm sorry, Roger. I should have been better. <laughs> but the about face, when you talk about repentance, is, is, is people in darkness. Listen, when you're in darkness, you, you don't know the light. You don't know which way to go. But when Jesus Christ comes into your life and you become a believer, now you have light. You're turned from darkness, and you're walking toward the light. Now the Word of God becomes your guide and directs you into all truths. Now you have a counsel and that directs you into truth. He said, repent. Luke said, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you will perish. Um, Christ preached repentance. Repentance is the word metanoia. That means to change your mind. That's right. It means to change your, listen, a changed mind that does not have a changed re, uh, behavior is not a changed heart. Listen to me. A changed mind that does not change behavior does not change a heart. Okay? You can believe all you want. You can believe Jesus and you can believe what he did. You can believe all you want intellectually. If it does not convert, if it does not, if it does not uh, parlay into change behavior, you didn't get saved. Righteous living. Intellectual belief will send more people to hell probably than anything else. Just knowing who, that, yeah, yeah, you believe, yeah, oh yeah, I believe Jesus. Yeah, I believe he was the Son of God. Yeah, mm-hmm. But that never translates into being attached with God and to serving God. Faith without works is? That's what Jesus said. That's what God said. Believers should become obsessed with the mission of the Lord. The ministry of believers is the same as Christ. We, pre- we preach 
Repentance. That's the message of believer. Is the same one as Christ. We preach repentance and that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You don't know why I preach. You know why I preach on hell. You know why I preach on uh, doing right. You know why I preach on the blood of Jesus. All those things is because we're one day closer today than we were yesterday. And he could come at any time. Believers are given the highest honor in the world. They are sent into the world on the same mission as God's very own son. Imagine that. The same message that Jesus Christ preached is the same message that we'll preach. All right, let's look at the next verses here. Verses 18 through 20, we talk about discipleship. Verse 18 says, Walking by Sea of Galilee, the two brethren. Uh, number one, n- notice these brothers are getting along. They're not like really like me and Rob. We, we, we would fight a lot. I could see us as fishermen. No, no, no. Now you got to throw it over here. No, I think it's over here. You know, these guys, fishermen in these days, these were hard workers. These, these are not ultrasound techs, right? These were workers. These were guys who, had, these were the putwood people. Have you ever hauled putwood? Yeah, yeah. You, haul, you ever haul hay? I mean, it's just not an easy way to do it, man. You're just hot, and it's getting all over you. There's no easy way to do it. Listen, fishing in this day was the same thing. These guys were fishermen. It says, they were casting nets in the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, watch what he says here. Uh, go to Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 5. So he tells them, he says, follow me. Know what's first. The first thing is to follow Jesus. Before you're going to make any disciples, listen, discipleship is one of the things that we're going to do. We're going to be grounded in the Word, relentless in prayer, intentionally generous, and we're going to prioritize fellowship. All of that will be, will be encircled around making disciples. Okay, But before you make disciples, remember what Paul did once he had... Once he had the, uh, the experience uh, uh, of salvation, he got saved. You know what he did? The first thing he did before he even started his ministry, he went to uh, Troas, where, where he went and studied under Gamaliel. Is that Gam- Gamaliel? Whatever. Okay. Well, he studied under that guy. Listen to me. The point is, you've got to be attached to Christ before you're making disciples. Look, look what happened here. He, he's just started his ministry. He's got his guys. They're fishing. They don't catch anything. It came to pass that the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood in the lake of Jesus. Go on. He saw two, two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. We're going to get a faster computer. He entered one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed. And, and, and he asked him, he said, hey, would you uh, thrust out a little bit from the land? He sat down and talked to people from the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said to him, Simon, launch out of the deep and let your nets for a drop. Or let your nets down. Simon answered him, saying, Master, look, listen, Jesus. We've done this before. We've done this all night. We've sat here all night. We've done this. We hadn't gotten anywhere. Uh, and and we, nothing has happened. Nevertheless, because you said now they're new at their ministry, he really don't know Jesus yet. This is why it's so important that you get to know the Word. This is why we have discipleship groups. And you know what we do in a discipleship group? We study the Word of God. That's all we do. We read it. We study it. We talk about it. We meditate on it. We memorize it. We do all those things. We do the Word so we can know Jesus. Because if you don't know Jesus, you're not discipling anybody. And he said, hey, but you know what? Because at thy, what? Word, right? At thy Word, I will let the net down. And when they had done this, they increased, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets broke. And they beckoned to their partners, which were on the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that it began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. Uh, you know, it's amazing when you catch a few fish, how those fishermen react. O oh Lord, I'm just so sinful. Right. And so, so, but notice what happens. Now he knows Jesus more. Those things you're going through, you're going through for a reason. Because you think there's nothing going to happen, God's not going to move, all of a sudden he puts $100,000 in your building fund. That's God. It's just God. That's the way he works. I, and you know what? I never saw it coming. I'd love to sit here and tell you, yeah, man, you know, I knew I had some friends and and I knew that was going to put some money in our account. Never saw it coming. You know, but, but you know what I do know now? I know that God can put $100 million in there if he wants to. He owns all of it. There is nothing that he can't do. 
The more I began to know God, listen, and I know I've been saved for a long time, but you never get over it. You never get enough. He just keeps showing you and showing you and showing you things that you think, listen, I thought Jeff would be dead. I thought he was gone. I knew God could, but I didn't know he would. And when he did, I thought, hey, hold on now. I prayed with a guy, and listen, I anointed a guy with oil at work at, at, uh, at Decatur. He came into me, weirdest thing, I know we got to go, but let me tell you a story. The guy comes in, he's, he's, they said he had stage whatever, um, I, I can't remember what it was or anything. So he said, hey, he brings some oil in my room, in my ultrasound room, just me and him. And you talk about awkward. I'm thinking, oh man, you know, I want to do this right, you know, how I mean, listen, I've never anointed many people with oil at all. So he comes in there, and, and, and I pray with him. We anoint him, man. We pray. We had a great conversation with the Lord. And he goes to get his test done, and they are clear. And I thought, God, are you messing with me? I mean, you never know. Listen, how many people did I not anoint with oil or pray with that I could have that God might have healed? We're the light, I'm telling you. And... Listen, he, he says here, follow me or connect me, and then, and then I will make you fishers of men. And there's so much more in this. Uh, verse, uh, but he goes on, James and John and those he had called them, and immediately they left their nets and they began to follow him. The key here is before you can serve, you have to know who God is. And finally... I want you to see this. Verse 23, And he went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And when he did this, his fame throughout all Syria, his, his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all the sick people that were taken, divers diseases, torments, and those which possessed with devils, those were lunatics. He healed all of them. Now I want to look at clearly, listen, this is about serving God, okay? It's the ministry of service. And I want you to think about you, because I can name a lot of people who I don't think serve well, but that's not who I'm responsible for. I'm just responsible for me. And so in, in, in this passage, he, he tells us here, believers are God's instruments of mercy. There are needs, uh, the, the greatest needs of the men that pointed out here was to hear the gospel, be taught the gospel, and to be healed. And he goes on, he names, in verse 24, he names, there was three types of healings. The first one, they were possessed with devils. That's a spiritual healing. Why do we have this, you know, when we, when we pray for people, when we, when we, um, uh, when we uh, minister to people, when we share the gospel, when we go on evangelistic visits to, get, to try to get people saved and those things, we're appealing to their spiritual needs. When we know a brother or sister who's fallen into sin, we go to them not to condemn them, we go to them to help them so they may be forgiven of their sin and be restored. The second thing that we see here, those which were lunatics, that this was a mental healing. And if there ever was a time in the history of our world, listen, I'm not a great mental health person. I'm not going to solve the mental health. But I went to a, I went to a, actually went to a, um, a pastor's roundtable about mental health uh, about two weeks ago, I guess it was. I didn't even know what I was going for the meeting for. I was going to talk to one of the pastors that was going because I was going to ride with him. And he had had a church like ours, and it had really grown. It's, it's, it's just grown crazy. And I wanted to hear how he thought so I could know, you know what we need to do next. didn't even know what this was talking about was mental health. And, and I got some of these books and, and, and things, and God began to just send me people in our church that, had, that struggled with this, that I know. And, 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 and me too, there are some areas that, that this will be able to help me. It's, you know, with mental health, a lot of times, it's knowing identity. Who are you? And then making sure that, you, that that is reinforced. And I actually started doing some of that, a couple of us, I started doing that, and... Um, to be, to be able to minister to those people. That's who Jesus ministered to. The, the mental health, the spiritual needs, and also the physical healing. Those that had the palsy, those things, he impacted, and it says he healed all of them. Now, one thing, if, if he's going through here, and he's healing all these things, you know what, that took a lot of what? Time. Time. So, so, so here's the question. Do you really serve? 
How much of your time do you take serving God? I'm talking about ministering. Ministering to people. Sharing the gospel. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to beat somebody over the head with scripture. You know all you have to share with people is your story? What God did for you? How much time do you spend? How much impact do you make truly ministering just like Jesus did? He preached. He shared the gospel. He healed people. How much time do you take ministering to people? With everybody standing with head bowed and eyes closed, maybe tonight the Lord has spoken to someone here as Linda begins to just play something. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You know, sometimes you can just look at somebody. I wonder how many times we walk right past that person who's hurting that we might could just stop and pray with and just encourage them. Sometimes it's that encouraging word. It's, it's sharing scripture. It's sharing encouragement. It's those things. Sometimes it's taking groceries to somebody. Sometimes it's something very simple we'll take for granted. We have all those things, but we take for granted those who do not. The question tonight is, do you minister like Jesus ministers? That's the question. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you'd like to come to the altar and pray, you're more than welcome to come, and you can just pray wherever you're at. As Linda plays, would you just pray? Father, we thank you so much for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for your word, your word that cleanses us, your word, God, that is truth. We thank you for that. I pray, God, for these graduates. Lord, I pray for the people in this building tonight, God, that you would direct their steps. And Jesus, always want to do the will of the Father. I pray that will be our heart tonight. We don't want anything else. We don't want anything to do with anything except follow the will of the Lord. And we thank you, God, for how you're working in our people, in our church, Lord, and in all things. And God, I pray just tonight as we go to fellowship that you'd bless our food, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for all things that you've given us. What a good day in the Lord it's been. And we just praise you. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, Lord, and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Linda. All right. We welcome our visitors and, um, and all those who came. We're going to go now. If you don't know how to get there, uh, you can go, we'll go out this door, and you'll follow, there'll be a long line of people that are hungry, and you just follow them as they zigzag around there, and, um, and we appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Any, anybody have anything? Anybody? Nobody, no announcements, nothing? Brother Kevin, love it, would you dismiss us?